Bush planes are designed to fly in and out of remote areas. They're engineered to be able to take off and land on short runways. They can also be outfitted with floats to be able to land on water or skis to land on snow. Some are made of metal and others of tube and fabric construction. A bush plane starts out as a design on paper. This company handcrafts four-seater tube and fabric models. The tubes forming the airplane's skeleton, the fabric its skin. Welders construct a tubular frame for the fuselage, the plane's main body. The tubes are chromoly, a type of steel that contains chromium and molybdenum, which makes it stronger than standard steel. Machinists make the aluminum fuel tank components and prepare the landing gear. Here, they're threading the axle for the tail wheel, a small rugged wheel at the back, which helps steer the airplane on the ground. The landing gear consists of this tail wheel and two bigger wheels at the front. They all have large, low-pressure tires, which enable the plane to take off and land on rough terrain. Workers spray aluminum pieces called ribs and spars with anti-corrosion paint, then rivet them together to build the internal structure of the wings. Using a crimping tool, they make tiny indentations in the ribs to perfect the alignment. Then they rivet on a skin of aluminum panels, about 1 50th of an inch thick in most areas. They construct the wing's hinge surface, the flaps and ailerons the same way. The factory's paint shop sprays the wings, flaps, and ailerons with highly durable urethane paint and the fuselage frame with powder coat paint, which is then baked on for extra durability. Now for the meticulous job of applying the fabric skin. The material is heat shrinkable polyester, commonly used in the aircraft industry because it's thin, lightweight, and exceptionally strong. Workers brush an adhesive similar to contact cement onto the painted tubing then adhere the fabric, working around the frame section by section. Once the fuselage is completely covered, they run a hot iron over the fabric. This shrinks it taut around the framework. After letting the adhesive dry for a couple of hours, they take strips of fabric, coat them with a urethane-based adhesive, and reinforce the seams. It's the same construction process for the tail components. At the front of the fuselage now, they install the pedals which control both the brakes and the rudder, which moves the tail from right to left. Then the cockpit instrument panel, a thin sheet of aluminum with laser cut openings for all the flight instrumentation. Next, two link control yokes. They move a series of chains which maneuver certain components such as the aileron control sprockets. Mechanics ran the fuel lines and most of the wiring within the fuselage frame prior to the fabric application. Now they install a stainless steel firewall between the cockpit and the engine. This seals the cockpit from engine heat, noise, and exhaust gases. After installing the landing gear, brakes, and windshield, workers mount the engine and exhaust system. Next, the plane's aluminum propeller. Other workers are busy installing the fuel tanks inside the wings. The fuselage now goes to the paint shop. When it comes back, workers bolt on the wings, supporting them from underneath with steel wing struts. The wings on a bush plane are positioned higher than those on other types of aircraft to give the pilot better ground visibility. After rigging up the flight controls and installing the interior trim, workers install the doors, plexiglass windows, and cockpit seating. Each bush plane is inspected at every stage of the production process. When it's completed, it undergoes a nose-to-tail final inspection and then a company pilot takes it out for a test flight. 